Hey guys, I'm the 50s kid. This is an E83. It's a 2004 BMW X3. This video is going to be how to change your engine oil pan gasket. The reason I'm doing this, this is, we're in the middle of my rebuild series on this car. This is just about how to replace your head gasket, you know, sort of rebuild your engine. Just do a head gasket replacement. Uh, went for when you have that situation where your, your head gasket's gone, something happens, your engine overheats, and you need to replace your gasket. That's what this series is. This is not a normal part of that job. You are very likely not going to have to do this at all. You can just pull your head off, change the gasket, do whatever you got to do, get the head rebuilt, put it back on, and away you go. Me, I, this engine was, you know, all the cooling channels on this engine were completely filled with white gunk. I think that it was automatic transmission fluid mixed with the coolant, or it could have been maybe they put some additive in with the coolant or something like that. I really am not sure. I'm going to replace the automatic transmission cooler just to make sure, just to be, be on the safe side. But because it had all that white stuff in it, because I had to clean it out, I had to use the garden hose to clean it out, I was spraying everywhere. So water was going down into the engine oil pan. The oil drain plug was pulled out, by the way, during this. But uh, it was rinsing all that white, some of the white stuff down into the oil pan, you know, through, the, through the, the timing chain, the passage of the timing chain right on the front of the engine. Also the oil drain back holes on the side of the block. So that white gunk was getting down into the oil pan and I can't be sure that all of it's been rinsed out of there. You know, there, there might be some left, there probably is. And I just can't take the chance, you know, because the oil pickup tube sits right down at the bottom of the oil pan. And, I turn this thing, put the head back on, turn this thing on, that white stuff gets sucked right back up into the, into the engine oil bearings, or into the engine bearings, and that's just bad. So uh, I gotta remove the engine oil pan and clean it out. To do that, I'm basically doing an oil pan gasket replacement. So that's what this video is. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, it's time for some bad whiteboard drawings. So I've already got an oil pan gasket replacement video, but that was on an E46. That is, I mean, it's the same engine, it's an M54 engine, but it's a different kind of setup, okay? So on a two wheel drive, you've got, um, it's gonna be a different oil pan, and it's also gonna be a different subframe. So this is the engine right here, top, of the, you know, top right here, that's the front of the engine. You're looking at it from underneath, or whatever, from above, it doesn't matter. This right here is going to be the subframe that the engine sits on, okay? And on an E46, all you got to do is just lower that subframe away and then you'll be able to get the oil pan off. I know a lot of you think it's stupid that they did it that way, but that's just the way they did it. And it's not that uncommon for a longitudinal engine like that. It's just, they call that a K-member. Some of them are bent in other ways and whatnot, but that's just the way this one is done. You got to suspend the engine while you drop the subframe away. Otherwise the engine would drop with the subframe. Not difficult. It'll, you only need like a $60 tool from Harbor Freight to suspend the engine from, uh, the, the, uh, from the fender. So I'll show you what that looks like in a little bit. On a four wheel drive setup, let's specifically talk about the X3 for a minute. This is what the subframe looks like. Instead of going straight across the middle right here, instead it looks like you got more room to actually take the pan off but the top of the subframe, it goes like that. You can see this is the shape of it. And the thing is, uh, we need to be able to, we need that this, this part of the subframe right here to not be in the way in order to get this front part of the oil pan off. So we still need to take that subframe away in order to do this. But there's an extra added complication because this is a four wheel drive, this thing has front axles. And what that means is there is a differential right here attached to the oil pan. And you know, it's gonna send a drive shaft back to, uh, to uh, meet with the transmission and all that. And there are gonna be axles sticking out from either side, right here and right here. There's gonna actually be a little, little carrier. In each case, these are bolted to the side of the oil pan with just, you know, some bolts. Okay, same thing over here. You got bolts going into the oil pan right here. So what needs to happen, and you know your wheels are over here and all that stuff. Okay, so what needs to happen is you got to remove the wheels. You got to remove the wheel lock nut. We're going to have to just kind of take the suspension loose. We're going to have to disconnect the lower ball joints or something. That way we get enough room so we can pull that aside and we will be able to get the axle out. You need to remove the CV axles 
from the engine oil pan in order to get the engine oil pan out of there. Okay, so it's a little more complicated to do. Now, on a, this, this is going to apply, this is going to give you a real good idea of how you do this on an E46 BMW that is four-wheel drive. So the XI models, this is basically going to be the same procedure, only the difference is the subframe is going to be connected down here. So it's more like a square instead of this, this shape right here. On the X3, you got this shape, and then there's a metal plate that bolts to it that kind of reinforces it. I believe on the, on the 3 Series uh, four-wheel drive, the, it just doesn't have that plate that bolts to it because it's a square and it's already reinforced. That's really the only difference, but the procedure is going to be the same. We're gonna, we need to remove the axles first, then we're going to drop the subframe, and then we can get the oil pan off. So this is the engine support bar I was talking about. It's about 60 bucks at Harbor Freight with 20% off coupon. And as you can see, it just it has legs that, and it sits on the fenders. And you know, it's got this contraption here. You got chains that go onto it. It comes with two of these, by the way. You only need one for this. Um, so I, for some reason, I've misplaced the chains that this thing comes with. So this is, these chains are a little smaller. This chain is a little smaller, but it's still gonna work. Um, the thing is, if you're doing this job, you're not going to have an engine taken apart like this. You're going to have the head on, you're going to have the intake on. There's a hook, there's, a, there's something on the engine, it's going to be sitting right about there. And you won't even need a chain, you can probably just hook that little hook right in there and that's all you need to do. So, I don't have that installed anymore, so I need to use the chain. Let me show you where I've connected the chain. I've just connected it to the studs sticking out right here, this is where the water pump bolts in. I've just put the chain on there, put the bolts on there. That's all you need to do. It'll hold the engine up, no big deal. Now, I need to go ahead and remove all of these components here. You know, I basically need to remove the oil filter housing. The oil filter housing extends all the way down the side of the engine. Uh, I primarily want to do that because I want to see if there's any gunk inside of there. And if there is, I need to clean this whole thing out. So. I'm going to spend some time removing those components. I'm not going to cover that. That's just covered in my oil filter housing gasket video if anybody's curious about that. But I just need to remove those components and get them out of there. So furthermore, you can see down here what I was talking about before. That's the axle that's going into the side. That, this is the carrier. This is the axle carrier on this side. You can see that the engine mount goes off to the side right there. So we're going to remove that bolt of the engine mount because We'll leave the engine mount connected to the subframe and we'll just, you know, we'll separate it right there. And this, we're going to need to pull the axle out of there. <clears throat> so the axle is going to go out that way. And then we'll, uh, I think we will, I think we have to, yeah, we have to unbolt the carrier. Actually, you know, I'm not sure about that from this angle. That carrier might just completely bolt into the pan, uh, in which case, we, I think we can leave it on. I mean, it just depends if it's covering the, the bolts for the oil pan or not, but you know, we'll get to that. So over here on this side, you can see uh, the, the steering linkage is kind of in the way, but that's the bolt for the engine mount right there. We'll remove that bolt. And then down here, this, uh, this black thing down here, that's the transfer case. So that also is uh, bolted to the engine oil pan. We're going to need to get that off. And we're also going to need to disconnect the front drive shaft, which runs, it's going to run back like this. We'll be able to see it from underneath. We'll disconnect that. That's all we got to do. So there are some things we need to, some bolts we need to remove from up top here. You're going to need to do this, okay? Now, this, this is going to be much easier for me because the head's off and the intake's off. Uh, but it's still fairly easy for you. The bolts are all on the sides right here. This one, I'm quite sure you're going to be able to just get at this engine bolt. Uh, you need a long extension, you know, or a couple of long extensions. You just kind of go down from up here and you get down on that engine bolt and you remove it. This should be a 16. Yeah, 16. So we got the bolt on the other side. We'll remove that as well. That one I am going to need an extension for. I'll just use this long extension. Okay, so that's that one. Now the final bolt is going to be on the steering rack right here. So you can see this bolt right here, this is an E10. There's another one down here. So this is like a steering coupler piece. 
on an E46, it's going to be different. It's only going to be as long as this is right here. So it's going to be about that long. And, you know, there will be a bolt on the top and a bolt on the bottom. Um, I think this is the best place to remove it. This is going to slide out fairly easily, hopefully. So that's an E10. We're just going to get that. So this one's going to be much harder for you. You're going to have to at least remove the lower intake boot in order to get access back here. Keep in mind that this electronics box is going to be over here. And this is, you know, this uh, power steering reservoir is not going to be there. So you've got like clear access down the side right here. Uh, you're just going to have to get down in there with a little ratchet and just unbolt it. But there's, there should be no obstructions right there. So it should be just fine. Okay, I've been staring at the suspension and I think I've finally decided how I want to do this. So you can see that on the X3, it's similar to an X5. It's got two control arms. One is, you know, at a 45 degree angle and the other is at a 90 degree angle to the subframe. And that's what keeps the wheel in place. You know, this one keeps it from moving in and out and this one keeps it from moving back and forward. Now on an, on an E46, it's going to be different. You know, it's going to be sort of an L shaped control arm. So you're going to have it bolting here, bolting here to the subframe, and then going back and also bolting to the back of the subframe or bolting to the body. Uh, I think it's actually the subframe and that has a bushing on it. So, you know, you can see that the, the, the points on this are still like an L really. You got point here, point here, and point here. These two basically, you know, can be considered the same point. So you, you see how this, you know, this L is going this way. On an E46, the L is going that way. The thing is, in order to get the axle out of here, we need to be able to move the wheel. We need to be able to swing it outwards like this so that we can get the, the CV axle out from here. And in order to do that, we actually need to disconnect these two control arms or in the case of the e46 it would be just the one control arm where it bolts into the carrier right here but uh it's going to be a pain in the butt to break this particular ball joint loose you know it's going up through the control arm there's a bolt on top of it right here you can do that you can break it loose you get the bolt off hammer on here with a hammer and that'll bust the ball joint loose that's a lot of work i say why not just disconnect it from right here this is just a bolt going through so, you know, it's a, a nut and a bolt. So we'll just disconnect it from there. Okay, that'll let it pivot. Now the thing about this ball joint right here, it's a little different. It actually bolts to the, uh, the, the carrier right here. There are two Torx bolts. So we can just remove those two Torx bolts and the ball joint will come off. So that will have effectively disconnected this whole wheel and we can just kind of pivot it out and remove the axle. So that's the way we're going to do it. This is a 16 on this side. You just got to hold it with a wrench. So hold it through here and it's an 18 on the other side. Okay, so actually I think before we remove the, the bolts on this joint, let's just like pull this bolt out of here and let's see what kind of play we got. Oh, oh look at that. Yeah, there's a lot of play, right? We, we've totally got enough room to articulate this and just get this out of here. You see, this is what, this is what's going to need to come out this way. So I just need to be able to pull this whole thing out, out to the side. So that's going to be real simple. Should be. So you see that this wheel lock nut is staked right here. I could use my impact and just spin it off, but that would most likely break these little pieces of metal right there. So this particular one, I'm going to unstake them. Usually, you know, I don't bother to do it. If it wasn't, if it wasn't like this, if there wasn't a, an actual ledge like that if it was just kind of bent inward it would you know I wouldn't I wouldn't unstake it because the impact will sort of unbend it once it uh, once it goes so this is a 36 12 point 36 millimeter 12 point it really helps to have one of these impact guns because it just makes quick work of this just like that. As you see, we are undamaged. And because this is California, this should not be 
rusted in there, although this car has been sitting, so I feel like I feel that it's rusty. Let me give this a couple love taps. A couple more maybe. See they give you uh, they give you a little bit before the thread starts, so you're not gonna really mushroom this one out, which is nice. This might be more frozen in than anything I've ever ex ever come across here in California. Normally, by the way, you remove the brake caliper and maybe the brake rotor for something like this, but it's not really necessary. This brake hose is really long, so this thing's gonna move aside and articulate. It might get a little tight up here, so maybe what I'll do is I'll just unclip this. It looks like this is just a little clip of some sort, you know, and uh, this probably pulls out somehow. Yeah, like that. So now, now this thing is gonna, you know, this, this brake hose is gonna articulate just fine and I can just sorta pull this thing aside, pull the whole thing aside and it should be just fine. Okay, we're gonna whack this thing free here. Um, before I do that, see how it's, it's loose right now? It's going to absorb the impacts like that. So I'm gonna reach back here and lift that, uh, that member back into place. That way it's just kinda gonna hold it. You can see that I did spray it and give it a couple whacks. There you go. We're out. Okay. This is where we have to get a little pry bar action going. What we need to do is stick this pry bar back here and we're gonna sort of pop the CV axle out. And I'll show you why and exactly where once I kind of get it done. Oh, okay. So it was part of the axle. I thought it was a seal that would get left behind. Like I said, I'll explain more in a little bit. Okay, we're all good there. There's the axle. So here's the end of the CV axle. And uh, I was pushing on it from this angle right here because I couldn't tell if this was a seal or not. I didn't want to damage this in any way, but truth be told, I could have stuck the pry bar in through there and this pride, you know, pride back or, you know, kind of done it this way and pride that way. The, the whole point is that you're trying to get this little circlip to uh, compress a little and then it pops through, it pops out. But this little circlip inside here is what holds it in place. So all you gotta do is just pop it and, you, and it just comes loose. So that's how you do that. You could, you know, do what I did, which totally worked. Get a hammer in from an angle hammer on your pry bar, or get a pry bar in from an angle, hammer on it, and that pushes it out. So now that we have the CV axle out, I'm gonna put this bolt back in, just to kinda hold this in place, just to keep this from like falling and you know, all that stuff. Plus, I'm actually thinking, you know what, I'm thinking I wanna put this bolt back in all the way, because, It'll help to sort of hold the suspension up once we lower it. It'll kind of keep the suspension up in the air a little bit. Keep it from dropping all the way to the ground. Okay, so with this axle, this is the passenger side axle or the right axle. This one, you know, this is where, this is where you need to pry. But you can see it, there's just, there's no room to get the pry bar in there and actually get some prying action going on. So, and I think that was like what it was like on the last one as well. So you gotta use these legs right here. You just gotta give it a tap with a hammer. Yeah, now we're getting it. Okay, so that's loose. I can just come in here. Slide it out. There's going to be a longer shaft on this one. This one might be a little difficult to get out. 
because of the suspension being in the way or the the wheel being in the way so we gotta move it aside a little bit kind of do a little juggling act but there we go we got that sucker out so I want to drain out this differential before I uh, remove it because if I don't it's going to spill out the fluid out the sides of the now open holes on either side so uh, I'm getting in here to open up the fill plug from the side and I believe this is it takes in a 14 millimeter allen socket so all I did was crack it loose and I'm not sure if you guys can see this here can you see this yeah, over here. So that's the fill plug. Looks like there is a little uh, washer. So grab that off. Get your fill plug. Set it aside. So get your fill plug off first. Just make sure. It's, it's just a good habit to do. It, it you know, wasn't really necessary in this particular case because we had an opening where we took the axle out. So the fluid would have drained out uh, okay anyway. But it's a good habit to make sure your, your fill plug comes loose before you take off a drain plug. And I should have rubber gloves on for this. The way you can sort of help prevent this from going too crazy is once you feel the threads loose, hold the threads on, you know, push the threads back this way before you actually take it off. That kind of makes it act just like a plug. And uh, that way you won't get uh, stuff all over you. So that should be mostly good. Okay, we're gonna get this front drive shaft loose. And these are E12s. Oh, in my extension, it doesn't like my extension, but I need that extension. Okay, so I'm thinking something like that, that's gonna stop the drive shaft from rotating. Come in here, give these a crack. Oh, is it really on? Yeah, okay. We can get both of these like that. Okay. So we just got to rotate this around. So we're like that. in like this. So if I had swivel e-torque sockets, that might have been easier. Good reason to maybe pick some up. That's that was plastic, whatever that was that fell. And uh, I don't think it's important. Uh, I could remove this drive shaft completely, but I think it'll be fine just sort of hanging where it is. I think I can work around it. And it should be just fine. Uh, while we're here, we're gonna unplug this sensor and get it out of this connector here, or this bracket, so that it uh, doesn't come down with the pan. So now all we have to do is remove the front transfer case from the side of the oil pan here. And I see one bolt here, and then one here, and there are gonna be two on the top, two matching bolts on the top. So I wanna go get the, the top bolts first, and then we'll come down here and we'll get the bottom ones. These are 16s, by the way. Okay, one of the top bolts on the differential is gonna be sort of hiding from you guys right here. But that's where it is. You'll be able to see it uh, in person. You know, it's, it's pretty clear, but that's where it is, and you just kind of got to crack that. That's a 16. Now, there's another one hiding, and unfortunately, this one's going to be underneath the engine mount. And um, I don't know if I'm going to, I think I might need to remove the engine mount in order to get at it. 
I got to get back down underneath and see. Um, either way, I think it's an underneath kind of thing because it's, it's, uh, it's directly where that engine mount is. Okay, so that bolt I was talking about, it's actually going to be accessible from down below, from up here like this. You just kind of have to feel for it, and it's kind of right there. So it's not too bad. I can probably spin it out. Well, I've got a better tool to spin it out quickly. Okay, there's the bolt. So now, one more tricky bolt we have. Kind of uh, is because the subframe's in the way right here a little bit. I mean, you could wait until the subframe's off in order to even do this. Okay. But it's not really necessary. So we're good there. So we'll leave that bolt in in place just for now so this thing don't drop. Just leave it in a couple threads. Okay. So you can feel that this thing is off now. So I'll take that rear bolt off. And this thing's gonna come down. couple more things I'm noticing. These uh, ATF cooler lines are actually bolted to the pan right here. So this is, a, this is the bracket on this side. I'm just going to have to disconnect it from right here. So that should, uh, that should get those sort of loose-ish. Okay, so that they are no, no longer connected to this metal bracket. So that will just allow the pan to just drop down. Another thing I want to get out is the oil dipstick tube. I believe it's bolted to the back of the engine mount. On an E46, it's bolted to sort of the front, and it's easy to get out. This one, I can feel that the bolt is in the back. It's going to be hard for me to film, so I'm just going to get it out, and then I'll show it to you afterwards. So I got that bolt out. I got it from underneath. Now this is free to go or come out. Like that. <laughs> Not so easy. Now that fuel line that you see back there, that fuel line was actually in this little thing here and I did this. That pops it open. I did that off camera and uh, pulled the fuel line out of that. So that's where the fuel line goes. This is the return tube for the CCV. The O-ring came out with the dipstick tube, so that's great. Oh, sorry. I wanted to show you that this is where, this is how it bolts in. So I just, uh, from, from below, just reached in from the back and popped it out. So, uh, so we're going to take the subframe down now, guys. I've got my floor jack underneath it, just, you know, so it doesn't just fall down crazily. There's, there's one bolt. There's an E18 here. There's a middle one here, and then there's a, a rear one right here. So I'm just going to begin removing them. There it is. I think I'm going to leave the rear ones until last. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the other side. I'm going to remove all three of those. And I'm going to come back here. This is going to be my, my uh, sixth and final one. So the rear ones are shorter than the front one. Okay, let's go ahead and lower the jack. See what happens. I actually would have expected it to fall pretty easily. Unless there's some bolts that I'm missing, which I don't think there are. Although there might be. 
Okay, that was my bad. There are, there are two more bolts. Uh, well, one more bolt each side. It's actually in here. So the first bolt, this was the rear most of the subframe. That first bolt came from in here. There's another one right next to it, which is sort of hidden by this, this plastic shield. Okay, there are eight millimeter fasteners here. That should let us, yeah, we should be able to sort of pull this thing aside enough. There we go. There was our little hidden fastener. I wonder if that's it. And I think I'm going to, I'm going to remove one more of these eight millimeter fasteners up here where you can't see it but it's just on the side. Might need to remove one more here. It's got a little center thing. I can see it, but I'm wondering if I can just pull it out anyway. Okay. So yeah, now this is just way out of the way. I want it to be out of the way that way, you know, this, <laughs> this doesn't interfere with it and it can just drop down okay. So eight millimeters and I guess one of these should take care of that. I'm going to go do the other side and we'll finish this up. So now we'll just let that down slowly. You can see how the suspension sort of holds it up, and that was the idea. That's why I left the suspension connected. Actually, what's mostly holding it up is the, uh, the steering knuckle. You know, we can probably leave it like that. Yeah, actually, we can just kind of leave it like that. So I'm going to say uh, no need to disconnect the steering linkage. Don't bother with that. It'll actually help you in the long run if you don't do that. Because now we do have access. Looks like we definitely need to get the, uh, the rest of the oil cooler lines off, the ATF cooler lines. Those are for sure. Because we got to get those and move those out of the way at the very least. So we are getting into the things that are going to be difficult for me to film. This is uh, the front of the oil pan. And you can see those lines are bolted to it. That's a 10 millimeter. So I'm gonna have to unbolt that 10 millimeter. Once I've done that, it's just gonna be a matter of getting the bolts out from around the side of the oil pan. I'm not gonna be able to film them all, but I'll just kind of show you where they are. So there and there, they're just all along the side. There, there, all along the side. So I will film as much as I can, but uh, yeah, it's getting a little difficult. And then here, up through these two holes, here and here, that's, those are two of the pan bolts. So they continue along the side, right there, and there. So there are gonna be three E10s, there's one there, there's one over there, see, right there, and then, there's one up here along the side uh, where you can't see it, but it's just in right in here. So we're just going to take all those bolts loose and get this pan off of here. This is the other bracket for the ATF cooler lines that connects right to the, um, the engine mount bracket. So I'd like those lines to be fairly loose. This way I can sort of get them out of the way. And yeah, I think now they're, they're quite loose enough and you know, I can get them out of the way enough to where I can get the pan off unobstructed. So that is what I wanted. So now it's just a matter of removing all of these bolts. Those are going to be some long ones. So you're going to go in 
between these two holes, there are going to be two bolts in here. And those are going to be medium length bolts. So the other one is up here. We might need to remove these cooler lines altogether from the side of the transmission just so I can get up on this bolt right here unless I can get through. Unless that's what they, they did here. So, of course, those are some long ones. Those are all the easy ones. Now we gotta get all the harder ones, which are hiding. Good there, so I think um, I can probably just do the rest from up above, just kind of reaching down and feeling and stuff. Um, I'm gonna stop recording here because I think there's there's just no way I can get any camera angles on this So I got the remaining bolts out from uh, up above The uh, front bolts along the oil pan, you know, you're just from up above. It's really easy You can just reach down and feel underneath where they are. We also have this um, This uh, grounding cable right here that we need to remove. It's at 13 So uh, those three bolts They're E10s one is uh, up here, where I guess it's being a little obscured for you. So it's kind of right here, right behind these uh, oil cooler lines. I mean, you could take the oil cooler lines out of the transmission if you want to. I think it's a 13 millimeter bolt right here. You know, you can pull that out. It would just give you a little more easy access, but I think I can kind of get up and around them. Got a three inch extension here. Yeah, you gotta be careful not to damage the line, but I have, I have been careful here. These bottom ones are gonna be real easy. So we'll crack that, crack that, and now we can spin. Here's our final one. That's that. This should be free. Should. Unless there are a couple that I have missed. Nope. It's free. So this should be interesting. Um, need to go forward a little bit. Then we can go backward, down and out. Okay, like that. Yeah, I was right. There's a little bit of that white goop in here. Here is the gasket.